this readiness to provide security. While cautioning protesters coming through from the, the Democracy Hub protesters currently in custody is asking the police to expedite investigation into the matter. But many have raised questions and concerns about this call by the AG. We're getting to it. Also, the Minister of Health has referred to the Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service and the Attorney General persons found to have acted inappropriately, leading to the tragic death of a patient at the Ojobi area for the, this particular incident. Really, what is the way forward? It's a question that we're asking tonight. And we're gonna get into it, a recall, what happened exactly within the month of June when this matter became very, very topical. And as always, you're an integral part of the conversation. Let's hear from you. The hashtag we're using is Ghana Tonight on Facebook and on X. Let's get talking. Well, let's settle for Ghana Breeze. The National Labour Commission is to summon organized labor on its intention to go on strike in support of the fight against illegal mining. The National Labour Commission has intervened to engage labor and government to forestall the strike. Executive Secretary of the Labour Commission of Fuswa Samwa says the commission will invite the aggrieved parties by October 10. We expect them, but we are not waiting. That is why I'm saying that the commissioners went on recess. Today is their first day of convening, and it's one of the things that they are going to consider. Because if we have to wait till the tenth day and they don't write to us and they go on strike, what happens? Yes, then that will yes, it will, it will be late for us to have made any proper intervention. Because at least if the union should strike for one day, that's a great loss to government and to everybody. <music> The health ministry has handed over the case of alleged medical misconduct at a trauma and specialist hospital to the criminal investigations department and attorney general's department. The decision follows investigations by the Ghana Health Service, which concluded that employees identified as having contributed to the planning and evacuation of the patient from the hospital to Ojobi, where she was abandoned until her death, did not act appropriately. The committee also recommended that the said staff be sanctioned by the Ghana Health Service through internal disciplinary procedures. The Attorney General Godfrey Yabuadami has called for a swift completion of investigations into democracy hard protests and a prosecution to enable the discharge of innocent persons. The AG noted that legitimacy of concerns raised during the protest must not infringe on the rights of freedom of movement or safety of security officers. There are attempts to create tensions and instill fear into people through demonstrations which in some cases are a ruse for mounting an attack on the security forces for our nation and disrupting the running of essential services, essential public services. This, with the greatest respect, is not countenance in the democracy. I urge the police service to swiftly conclude investigations by the next agenda to the cases involving the prosecution of SSS for recent protests in Accra, so as to exclude by that date all those against whom sufficient evidence cannot be found to proceed further. I also advise the prosecution to consider relevant bail applications at the next agenda date of the cases. The flag bearer of the NDC has accused government of creating fake opinion polls to hoodwink voters into believing they are winning the December elections. Polls largely have favored the former president who stepped to win the elections. Campaigning in the Northeast, home region of the NPP flag bearer, Dr. Baumia, John Mahama says the NDC will never be complacent. We must not be complacent. We must protect every single person's vote. And that is why I say 
In this election, all of us are going to be polling agents. We're not going to select just two polling agents to go and sit there, and the rest of us go home and sleep. We would stay there until every vote is counted, and the result is declared before we go to bed. So from the 7th to the 9th of December, none of us is going to sleep. The Ghana Football Association announced on Monday that CAF has granted temporary approval of the Akraspo Stadium for Ghana's next home match against Sudan in the 2025 Afghan qualifier slated for 11th October 2024. It will be Ghana's first competitive game in Accra since March 2021 where they beat Sao Tome and Principe 3-1. Well, a lot of you have been reacting to the current state of the Accra Sports Stadium after that ban by CAF. That, that's what, you know, some wake-up call should do. And, and some instances like this get leadership to wake up from their slumber and do what is expected, really. Uh, miracles do happen. But there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. Coming up next year on Ghana Tonight, the Attorney General, whose office is leading the prosecution of some of the Democracy Hub protesters currently in custody, is asking the police to expedite investigations into the matter. But many have raised concerns about this call by the Attorney General. Exactly what is that concerning there? That's the conversation that we're starting with tonight. And the Attorney General, Godfrey Abu Adame, has called for a swift completion of investigations into the Democracy Hub protesters and the prosecution to enable the discharge of innocent persons who were picked up. Now, the Attorney General also noted that the legitimacy of concerns raised during the protests must not infringe on the rights of and unfreedom of movement as well, or the, the safety of uh, some security persons and officers who are on duty on that day. I want us to take a listen to the Attorney General first, and then we'll get into the details of exactly his position. Take a look. We are in urgent national crisis, and all citizens and institutions with any form of role to play must be called upon to act. Your leadership, I therefore respectfully call on you to direct all judges sitting on Galamse cases to conclude the cases the hearing of which has started within one month from the commencement of the legal year on 10th October 2024. Reasonably, it can be done. There are attempts to create tensions and instill fear into people through demonstrations, which in some cases are a ruse for mounting an attack on the security forces for an and disrupting the running of essential services, essential public services. This, with the greatest respect, is not concerns any democracy. I urge the police service to swiftly conclude investigations by the next agenda date of the cases involving the prosecution of SSS for recent protests in Accra, so as to exclude by that date all those against whom sufficient evidence cannot be found to proceed further. I also advise the prosecution to consider relevant bail applications at the next agenda date of the cases. That's the Attorney General there, Godfrey Yabwada. And essentially, that statement to some lawyers who have been listening to this, in their view, underscores the acknowledgement of, of the Attorney General of the fact that some of these protesters, about 53 of them were told, who are in prison and police custody at the moment, being detained. Some of them may be innocent. And, and so that, that process has to be swift. But then again, to the extent that the bail application has been denied, that raises another question as well, if these persons may be innocent. But the details of the Attorney General's statement, uh, as put out earlier, here's it. says, an unhealthy practice or cycle in the life of the nation is occurring again, in, in his view, that drumbeats of violence, mayhem, inc incitement to violence and civil disobedience are being bitten and indeed have gone a notch higher. And attempts to create tension ahead of the elections and instill fear into people through demonstration, in some cases, uh, rules for mounting an attack on the security agencies. But he puts great respect in counter that cannot be countenanced in any democracy. 
in any advanced democracy when protested exceed the limits of free expression according to the Attorney General and show disregard to their communities and the safety of their own lives and that of other members, then action will be taken in facing the full rigors of the law. And this is the emphasis where it's calling on uh, persons who, are, especially judges sitting on Galamsey cases, to conclude the cases hearing of which are started within one month. So take note of this. He gives a one-month period for the judges sitting on Galamsey cases to, at least in his view, have these cases concluded on reasonably as it can be done. And finally, urging the police to swiftly conclude investigations by the next agenda dates of the cases involving the prosecution of excesses from the recent protests in Accra and also exclude by that date all those against whom sufficient evidence cannot be found. And this is where I bring in Martin Pebo, his private legal practitioner, and he's also one of the lawyers providing legal support for some of these protesters who are being held, the Democracy Hub protesters who are in police and prison that is custody as we speak. Council, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. This is the Attorney General making that call to the prosecution, in this case, the Ghana Police Service, urging them that by the next agenda date, they should at least ensure that those whom they do not have sufficient evidence, in his view, uh, sh should then be granted bail and swiftly conclude their investigations by the next agenda date on this Democracy Hub matter. How does this strike you? I must say an equivocal thing that the Attorney General is involved in smoking mirrors. Smoking mirrors, meaning it's double standards, it's hypocrisy. Now, let me explain further. Under the law, before you arrest anybody, you should have a probable cause against that person. I would say probable cause, at least you should have some basic facts that tie the person to the crime. So from the statement of the attorney general, they themselves admit that there are certain persons who were not uh, involved in any of the alleged crimes. And so now he's asking the police to hurry up with investigation. That's wrong. Don't keep them in custody. It, it's, 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 it's wrong. Rather, under the law, you are supposed to do your investigations first so that if you have anything against any of them, that is when you then arrest. But you don't arrest the person, keep the person in custody, and now go around saying you are investigating. No, that's like putting the cat before the horse. You remember this case, Major Mahmoud's case, the, the Nchirapuasi matter. That's the same way they carried over 30 people or so. Then eventually, you see, they had to uh, release quite a number of them. Even before finally the case went to the submission of no case stage, and then some were further released. No, it doesn't speak well of our justice uh, delivery system. And so the attorney general should be the last person to sanction such conduct of arresting citizens when you haven't done any thorough investigations to link them, but rather after the arrest, before you go around looking for evidence. Well, I'm not surprised because this is the same Godfrey Dami who was caught on tape coaching Japa to go and uh, listen, make false statements to the court, to lie to the court, that's suborning the witness. So that's the attorney general. He's also the same person who added my client, ACP Dr. Benjamin Agojo, to the treason trial case when he himself said there was no evidence. So it's his modus uh, operandi that he will just add people and then later sift or the court should do the sifting for him. But, but you see, counsel, mm. and I want to stay a bit further on this matter because in that last part of the statement I make reference to, there's an advice that he gives to the prosecution, and in this case, uh, the, the police. And we understand, based on the police statement, that this case is being prosecuted directly from the Attorney General's office. But he makes the point in advising the prosecution to consider relevant bill applications made at the next adjourned date of this particular case, of the cases involving uh, the, these uh, Democracy Hub protesters. So this is the advice coming from the Attorney General 
whose office is directly prosecuting this particular case. And, and, and for you, and where you see you are, do you also agree with the lawyers who point to this advice that it clearly should be going to, to the persons within his office? Who has asked him? His, if he, you see, if he believes in the cause of the liberty of accused persons, right, he should not have allowed his officers to oppose the bail application. For crying out loud, these offenses are misdemeanor offenses, okay? The causing unlawful damage, the one that he charged them with, that one is a misdemeanor. The uh, offensive conduct, the unlawful assembly, so on and so forth, misdemeanor, meaning that the sentence, if in the unlikely event they are found guilty, will range from a fine up to three years in, in, in imprisonment. So when the sentence is very small like that, you don't start imprisoning the person, you don't start punishing the person with remand, even when the person has not been convicted. So it is X on his face that he didn't exercise his discretion to admit this uh, uh, young person to bail, and then he asked for the case to be put before the court, and he further aggravated the situation by opposing the application for bail. So what it means is that when the lawyers for the accused asked for the bail and gave their very reasons, then the state attorneys, those representing Godfrey Dami, also got up and told the judge why they think the bail should not be granted. And unfortunately for us, the judge listened to them. I've already said elsewhere, and many people have joined in, that what the judge did, that remand for two weeks was disproportionate, not in a democratic Ghana. Yes, not only just yes, uh, Obri Yebua, it applies to Evelyn Asamoah, uh, yeah, all those who remanded this accused. We are not happy at all. To our citizens, we have to voice it so that they should hear that in a democracy, they shouldn't do what they are doing. How do you remand somebody for two weeks? This misdemeanor offenses. What they should be concerned is the fact that Chairman Wundmi, who degraded the town on Imri Forest, the size of at least 10 football fields, is still walking around. So the man who has polluted our water, the man who has poisoned us and his company, Akunta Mining, they have not had their day in court. And then citizens who are angry and seek to draw the attention of the state by engaging right. in small uh, PR stunts uh, are now in custody for two weeks. I mean, but, but counsel, and I know, I know that, and I know very quickly before I let you go, you're also providing some legal support for some of these protesters, democracy of protesters who are in custody as we speak. What's the latest on that? Okay, so the case went to court. That's one of the cases. You know, there are 53 in all. So today, nine were before court. We we're hoping that their bail application could be taken. That's first of all, the shortening of the time so that the case can be heard today, which we call abridgment, you know? Uh, let me go back one step. The case was fixed. That the case in the High Court was fixed for Monday, 7th October. But because of the precious liberty of the accused, lawyers applied. We all put our heads together and said, no, let's apply so that instead of waiting till Monday, the judge will hear the case this Monday, rather. So this Monday, the case went to court, but the Attorney General came and his representatives okay, came and argued that they had just seen the papers. So they've not had enough time to respond. In law, we call it short service. So the judge agreed and postponed the case to today, giving them 48 hours. Today they came and now they argue that the, what the judge in the trial court wrote, that's the, this case came from uh, Justice Kwabna uh, Obri Ebua, uh -huh. that what he wrote, the proceedings, have not been put before Justice uh, Tasiame. Okay, come for Tassiame, right? In the high court. So the attorney general was saying the case is not ripe to be heard. Eventually, the court agreed with the attorney general and adjourned the case to Monday, which is the original date the case is to be heard. This tells you that we need a lot of law reforms because once the liberty of the accused is at stake, I'm expecting that if what was written in the circuit court has not been fully typed by now, there should be opportunity for uh, the registrar of the high court to go for the original book in which the judge wrote uh, the proceedings. Yes, it happens. There are cases when there is a doubt, the court will make an order.
go to the circuit court, bring me the original book. That could have been brought, and then the judge will see what was recorded. And then we'll have the uh, abridgment application moved, and also, secondly, the bail application. So we need urgent law reforms. We need this law reforms. Otherwise, with what is happening, the paper number one, number two, uh, number four cases, the attorney general, we render them useless. Because in table number four, the Supreme Court repeated through Sophia Kufu that human liberty is priceless. Human liberty is priceless. So where, in this case, the persons have come to court, but the only problem is that what the judge wrote last Thursday has not been fully tied, and so has not been brought to the court. Yes, you stand down the case and order the registrar, go to the circuit court, go through the necessary procedures, and bring them the book, because that will then be giving meaning to the principle that personal liberties are priceless. But then again, uh, and, uh, and probably we're, we're going to stay the steam on this, uh, issues with, with protests and matters arising. Uh, Martin Pebble, appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us. He is a <laughs> private legal practitioner and then also uh, one of the lawyers providing some legal support for these protesters. Democracy are protesters who have been held in prison and police custody as we speak. Let's stay a bit on the matters with protests. Coming up next, you're on Ghana tonight. Another three-day anti galamse protest begins tomorrow uh, here in Accra as the Ghana Police Service expressing readiness to provide security while cautioning protesters against excesses. We've got details of that shortly. And then also reactions from uh, some of these persons uh, who are involved in this. But there's a group that they calling itself the Concerned Citizens of Ghana are saying all is set for their three-day street protests against the arrest and detention of some democracy have protesters, but the most important message they want to send across is the devastating effect of illegal mining. This three-day protest is also aimed at calling on government to declare a state of emergency against Galamse, and the, the Ghana Police Service has already confirmed its residents also in preparedness for this protest. We're going to get into the statement shortly uh, to give you details of exactly what the Ghana Police Service is saying uh, on this matter. But Albert Owusu where do is the stop Galamse now, uh, one of the protesters and also a convener for this free the citizens is joining us on, on Zoom. Albert, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Hello, Albert, good um, evening. Thanks for having me. Hello, good evening. Great. Now, first off, let's establish this. Uh, what, what's the preparation ahead of tomorrow in terms of your final engagement with the Ghana Police Service with respect to their routes and all the other arrangements ahead of this three-day protest beginning tomorrow. Okay, so thank you very much and good evening to everybody. Um, we are fully prepared. Um, I believe that on the 26th of um, September, we actually wrote to the Ghana Police Service that we were going to um, protest, uh, have a three-day protest, and then we are going to move from the Okonglu bus stop all the way to um, the, how do you call it, Independence Square. And one of the things that we, 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 we had to do a very due diligence regarding the routes to use, because, you know, per the, per the constitution, you don't have to, you know, use routes where there are, like, the, uh, there's a hospital and all that, where there are security zones and all that. So we really mapped up our routes so well that, you know, we, we avoided all the, the 37 hospital and then the Jubilee House and all that. But then at the end of the day, we went, after we wrote the letter, we went to the police. They invited us, actually. We sat down. They saw our routes that we had mapped. And they were really, really happy. They were really, really, you know, they, they were really happy that at the end of the day, we actually mapped a route that was, you know, not going to stress all of us. Uh, and so, yeah, they agreed to us. They wrote back to us that, they have actually agreed to give us the support. Um, but one of the things is that per the Constitution... Uh, hello. Unfortunately, uh, Albert also would have uh, connection truncated a bit. We'll try to... You have to yeah, uh, Albert, I lost you. I lost you briefly. What I want to find out is that so tomorrow you would, you would go through a route to, and, and end at the Independence Square, correct? 
we will rectify the connection to, to Albert shortly. But the Ghana Police Service put out a statement not too long ago about this protest beginning tomorrow. We have portions of that statement. I'm going to put it on the screen right now. And they say, quote, during police engagement with the organizers, the police reminded the organizers of their responsibilities under the Public Order Act, which includes being held liable for any damage caused to any public property during the demonstration. They continue that additionally, the organizers were also reminded of police responsibilities under the Public Order Act, which include taking all such steps reasonably necessary during the demonstration as follows, to assist in proper conduct of any special event, by directing the routes of such event to prevent obstruction of pedestrian or vehicular traffic and also to disperse crowds at any special event where uh, the, the police have reasonable grounds to believe that a breach of the peace is likely to occur. So th that's what they stated in there. They also give the routes, and this is what you should pay attention to if you're watching us right now. This is where the the consent citizens demonstration protesters will go through. They're going to converge at the Okponglo area near the University of Ghana Sports Stadium and then they'll proceed through Okponglo traffic light towards the Shiashi Standard Authority traffic light through to Shangri-La to airport traffic light. They'll turn right to Association International so that means they are avoiding um, the main airport area to, to the Silver Star area. They are not using that route. They're going to turn right um, through the Association International School, then through the National Service Secretariat. Then they would merge onto the Kaukudi traffic intersection through the Kanda Highway to Accra High School Junction, through the Electoral Commission Office. Then they would go through the Ridge Hospital, that's the Great Accra Regional Hospital, through the AU runabout to, to Parliament House, and then also the Osu Cemetery. Their final end point is at the Accra Sports Stadium car park. That is the route as agreed upon uh, with the citizens, concerned citizens, demonstrators tomorrow. These are the routes as, you, as you, you do, you're seeing right now. And in fact, there's more of it. You can see all of this on 3news.com. So that be advised if you have to use these roads tomorrow morning because as is indicated, there's going to be quite some, some roads that will be blocked to ensure that this demonstration takes place. Albert, I was asking, so if, if it, can you hear me now? Yeah, hello, I can hear you. I Great. can actually hear you. Perfect. Now, and quick one. So you're, you're going to end your demonstration, the protest tomorrow at the Accra Sports Stadium car park. What happens on day two? Park, and exactly. What happens on day two and day three? So, so on day two, we are, moved, we are converging back to Okonglo. And we are going to march all the way back to... And then this time around, tomorrow, we are petitioning the AG's office. Then on the, on the, how they call it, on the second day, we are going to petition the parliament, uh, the parliamentarians, we are going to petition the speaker. Then on the third day, which is the final day, you are going to converge back again at, you know, Okonglo and move all the way to, you know, and petition um, the Ministry of uh, the Ministry of um, Lands and Natural Resources. We're also going to petition them. Then in the evening, we are going to, uh, I think by then we'll probably have access to the Independence Square. And we are going to mount a very giant screen where we would have, you know, videos of all the, of videos of all the documentaries that were done by the likes of Erastus and all that projected on, on the giant screen for people who probably are in a crowd they don't really know what is actually happening across the country, for them to actually see the effect of Galamse and what it's actually doing to our, to, to, to our beloved country. And so this is actually what is going to be for the three days protest. I see. And, and is this going to be a naked demonstration as was earlier communicated that, you know, some of you said you're going to be naked on the street? Oh, no, 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 no. I think that we have actually told each and every one coming to actually put on an attire, a black or red attire, probably have a red band, and then have a red band on, or, yeah, anything red or black on. Uh, we've also uh, asked our colleagues or so friends who are coming from Kumasi and Western region all over, all over, you know, the country to come along with a sample of all the rivers that have been polluted. 
and so we will be making demonstrations. We will, we will make people see exactly what you know is happening to us as a, as a, as a country. And so nobody's going to have any naked demonstration. It's, we are going to be fully clothed and we'll be having wearing our attires. I see. Albert, thank you very much. And uh, we're going to be every step of the way uh, bring you up to speed for you, our viewers, and also our listeners on 3FM, on your FM, Connect FM, Akuma FM, uh, across all media journal platforms uh, tomorrow. And here on your election command center, we keep tabs on this matter. And that's Albert Buedu there. It's with the citizens. Uh, we're going to be demonstrating tomorrow to drum home the need for some immediate action to be taken to clamp down on the impact of illegal mining and also demanding the release of these democracy out protesters who are being held in police and prison custody. You're also live here on Ghana tonight. Coming up next, the Ministry of Health has referred to the Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service and the Attorney General persons found to have acted inappropriately leading to the tragic death of a patient at Ojobi. For uh, this onward uh, this, uh, decision to be taken. Now, uh, we're getting to that shortly here on, on Ghana tonight. And the Ministry of Health has handed over the case of this alleged medical misconduct at the Trauma and Specialist Hospital to the Criminal Investigations Department of Ghana Police Service and the Attorney General's Department. Now, according to the to the statement, and, and these are the videos of uh, the, this this woman who tragically died uh, sometime in well, we got the information in June this year. We we'll put it out strongly. The investigation by the Ghana Health Service, uh, which concluded that the em employees identified as having contributed to the planning and the evacuation of the patient from the hospital to Ojobi, where she was abandoned until her death, did not act appropriately. That's one. The committee also recommended that the said staff by, be sanctioned by the Ghana Health Service through internal disciplinary procedures. Also, the ministry, however, is of the view that in the light of the gravity of the issues, captured in this, that said report involving the loss of life. Further investigation should be carried out by the Attorney General and Minister of Justice and also the Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service. And this is a story that got lots of you livid about the details as we put out when we visited the Ojobi community. And a number of them, indeed, what we interacted with, said they did not know or they did not identify this person. This report also says that the persons interviewed did not identify this deceased as a resident of the area. So they, they're going to trace all of that. But if you recall, when this matter came up first, the hospital where all of this happened, the hospital director issued a statement with his narrative. Let's recall that. Take a look. He said in that said report that one, that on the above mentioned date, the National Ambulance Service called the social welfare officer of the hospital to inquire as to whether the hospital was ready to accept an unknown knockdown person by a hit and run driver. And the response was in the affirmative. After the necessary examinations were done, POP was cast on both lower limbs of the patient due to the fracture of the tibia bones. Now, this corroborates the point in this report that we have seen that this person, the deceased, has not been identified by the residents or these persons who have spoke, spoken to us yet. The hospital, as usual, according to the, their narrative, took absolute responsibility for feeding, medication, and housekeeping of the patient. The patient had been on admission for six days and finally discharged on the 3rd of June after being declared well. The medical report was tendered in during the hearing as, as evidence. Based on the outcome of the interaction with the social welfare and patient, it was established that the patient hailed from Gomwa Ojobi community and that also confirmed where the National Ambulance picked her from. At certain point in time during the treatment process, the patient became disoriented and started to exhibit some amount of violence. However, after gaining some strength and consciousness, the patient was calm and wished to have been sent back to where she was picked up. And that, that's where the accident occurred. Moreover, 
after the patient was declared by well by the clinician, coupled with the fact that she was itching to leave the hospital, a consensus was reached by the two social welfare officers to send her back to Gomojobi, as agreed by the two social welfare workers. It was at that juncture that the hospital ambulance accompanied by the social welfare officer and the staff of the hospital were detailed to transport her accordingly to the preferred destination of her choice. And guess what? The preferred destination of her choice is what you saw in that video, the bush, where they just went to leave her to her death. And this is what prompted the uproar and the public backlash on this. Dr. Thomas Anaba is Chief Executive Officer of the Africa Center for Health Policy and a former Chief Executive Officer of the Greater Accra Regional Hospital, formerly Rich Hospital, is joining us on Zoom. Dr. Thomas Anaba, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Good evening, Okansi, and good evening to your cherished uh, viewers. If you can kindly put your video on for me, please, um, then, then we can proceed. Um, but, but while we are taking... The, net <laughs> the network appears very poor, so that's why I put it off. Uh, oh, all right, okay. But we can see you clearly, okay? But, so this is the verdict, as, or as put out the, the, by the report of the Minister of all Health. Right. The Minister of Health has indicated that they have done the investigation, that something more needs to be done by the Attorney General and the CID of the Ghana Police Service. You've seen this report. What's your take on it? In fact, when I saw the report, I was very impressed about the good work done by the team that was constituted to go into the matter. And I really salute them. I think they have come to vindicate all those who called for the investigation to be set up, and then they did a good job. It has also come to prove that uh, the medical director and some of his subordinates really did so much harm to Ghanaians and to the woman who lost her life. Uh, it is very clear from the report that there was connivance to do away with a human being, throw him into the bush, without compassion to die just because she was behaving untowards. And I think, let me say kudos to the team that did the investigation. However, I, I am not happy about what is going on. People are still at post and we want to hear something very concrete from the Ghana Health Service. Despite the fact that the case has been uh, sent to the Attorney General to handle the criminal aspect. I think the civil aspect must be properly handled because there is misconduct by the staff, especially the medical director and few of his staff in his hospital. You, you want that element of misconduct to be a, a central focus of the next step in this investigation? The misconduct of the part of the, the hospital director and then sure. also the staff. Sure, because if any uh, professional, health professional, misconducts him or herself, the Ghana Health Service, together with the Medical and Dental Council, first of all, would have to penalize them for the misconduct. And if it is proving that there's some aspect of criminality in it, then the case is given to the Attorney General to pursue the criminal aspect of the, of the case. This is a case that, from what we have seen, read on the report, that the, even the social worker, who is supposed to be the defendant of purpose on unknown people and vulnerables, was a complicit in this murder case where a victim who could not walk, a victim who had his hemoglobin as low as seven, which can cause delirium, can cause agitation, can cause loss of a, a mind and, and towards behavior from that person was dumped in the bush, not close to a restaurant where she can get food to eat, not close to a borehole where she can get water to drink, but in a bush 
where she cannot get any help to die. This is professional misconduct. The medical director gave out the ambulance to take the woman out, even appointed somebody who is not a qualified driver to be driving an ambulance. This is a misconduct from the medical director. He is in charge of impress, in charge of coupons for fuel. When we have the administrator, it means he has so much power in the hospital to do whatever he wants because he knows that powers given to him are from some people that no one can argue with them. And we have also investigated his background. I think that he has over abused his office to an extent that even the nurse in charge would like to throw away a patient from a hospital and have to dodge the right people who are supposed to handle purpose and look for a deputy to execute an agenda just because they wanted to please a medical director who doesn't want a noisy patient in his hospital. Was a woman noisy because she wanted to be noisy? I can even tell you that from medical point of view, the agitation and the restlessness and the untoward behavior of the woman might have been caused by hemorrhagic anemia or hemorrhagic shock. An anemia that is sudden can cause somebody to be delirious. Even if we can't prove that she was really a mentally deranged person, because so far nobody knows the woman. So nobody can for sure say that the woman had a mental problem. No one. Since the records didn't show that somebody identified the woman to be mentally deranged. Perhaps the trauma of the pain could cause this woman to be delirious. So I want to say that the medical director currently is at work. And I think that it is shocking that with this report, the director general of Ghana Health Service will still allow this medical director to be at post and working. Because I've checked today and he's at post and working. Working for who? I see. The medical director is still at post. Uh, who superintended over this matter? Based on what you know, he's still at, at post. Yes you, yes, you can call somebody right now in the hospital, from that hospital, and ask whether the medical director is not at post. He's at post. That is what is annoying. It means that this is just like a cover-up, but thanks to God, criminal activities have no expiring dates. If he has his big bosses, like Dr. Isias are recovering him, he will soon go. I see. And you'll be dealt with. But, but, I would never condone any criminality or any misconduct for any reason. Because to me, this was one of the worst things that could happen to a patient. Uh, I see. But in the report, the, a number of things are captured in that the narrative of the hospital staff who were even interviewed by the committee that was set up was, was meant to conceal some information because all the staff of the hospital who appeared before the committee put out the narrative of this story that the committee realized that was concealing some very important aspect of, of the entire incident. And so they had to go beyond the narrative by the staff to authenticate something more than that. Now, this matter has been referred to the CID. What more could have been done? Yeah, it can be referred to the CID. We know, we know what the, the CID works under somebody who is going to investigate. It's the attorney general who is going to investigate. And we know very well that that, that medical director is a, ba is, is, is a baby of uh, Isia Sari. What is he going to do? The advisor to the president on health. What is, it, what is the attorney general going to do? Okay, I'll beg him. He should expedite this case the way he expedited uh, 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 a two forces case. Let's see whether how it will end. I want to dare him. To expedite this case like he expedited a two forces and Japas case. This is somebody we all know. Everybody in Ghana Health Service knows that he was even appointed as a medical director when he was not qualified by Sia Sari. No, but and I mean, he's Sia boy. If you say he wasn't qualified, can the what, Attorney what General mean? investigate that boy? Uh, but but Dr. Naba, he wasn't. As at that Dr. time, Naba. there were people. Do, do, there were. Do, do, excuse me. Do, do, as at that do, time, there were do, people more qualified than him in that hospital to, to be the medical director. But but then again, Dr. He Naba, was a junior staff. Dr. Naba, and do, there were do, senior staff. Dr. Naba, hold on a bit for me. Okay, yes. you've you've made, made that point, but that's not the issue on this in the discussion this evening. Let's let's. All let's, right. I, I want so let's, to let's leave that issue track. aside. But I'm telling you, 
I am telling you his links with Isi Asari, that, who is that, the that, president that, that's, that, that's fine. But then again, what I, is going act, to I ask, to I ask, you know, a, Ghana. I ask a specific question as to what more can be done beyond referring it to the CID. And it's breaking. Hello? Are there other institutions? The are, there, are, there, are there other institutions within the health sector that could investigate this matter as, as well as the CID who have been referred to this particular case? No, so far the committee that has been set up, that was set up to investigate, have done their work. And I think it is very clear. If we want any other institution to investigate, it will be the Medical and Dental Council. And that will need somebody to go and report the case, or they pick it up from the Ghana Health Service to investigate for professional misconduct. There is right. professional misconduct. Right. There's administrative misconduct. Right. That can be investigated. The death of the woman can be investigated by the Attorney General because it's a criminal act. Right. And all those involved must be punished. Hmm. Dr. Naba, I, I do appreciate your time on this matter, but there was a, a, f a quick question that came through from one of our Facebook viewers asking if per your, your experience as a medical director of a hospital, if a patient requests that, take me back to where you pick me up, do you apply common sense and discretion to say, for instance, that in this particular case, we picked you up from the bush, so we won't take you there, or you just oblige to the patient's request and do as the patient is asking? It is very clear, if you pick somebody anywhere and send him to the hospital as a good Samaritan, it is the duty of the hospital to receive the case once it's an emergency. There's no hospital that should neglect any emergency case. And when you are not able to find where the person is coming from, the right thing to do is to get social welfare, to come in to look to see how they can identify this person. Like they have said in the report, even the police was not informed about this accident. If the police was informed, Perhaps they could have used various means, fingerprints or whatever, to identify where she is coming from. That was not done. But you can't take her back to where she was when you haven't remedied the cause that brought her to the hospital. The issue that brought her to the hospital was broken limbs. The broken limbs were not fixed. And she was taken back to the bush. Is that right. how you treat somebody? A patient comes to your hospital with malaria. You don't treat him of the malaria, you ain't going to put him in the bush. Is that how we should do? That is not what we are asked to do. Right, and, I, and you have to treat the patient, look for his relative. If you can't find, you hand him to government. Well, we'll see how the coming days will be on this matter, as is referred to the CID and the Attorney General's office. Dr. Thomas Anaba, appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Thank you. Great, Dr. Thomas Anaba is a former CEO of the. Accra Regional Hospital, formerly Ridge Hospital, Executive Director of the Africa Center for Health Policy there. So live, live here on Ghana tonight. Stay with us here on your election command center. Welcome back. Manifesto check on your election command center. Dennis Barberi Wadam, the manifesto checker is here. What do we have? So tonight we are getting something from the Ghana National Association of Private Schools and they have a take on the 2020 election manifestos what with respect saying? to manifesto promises that were in line with private school education in Ghana. And this is coming from the background that as far back as March, they had put together their own manifesto okay. that relates to their area and that met the major political parties and also the other political parties so they could pitch their ideas to them. Mm. The intention was that after the manifestos were made, they wanted to see their ideas or their policies reflect in those manifestos. Right. Now that the manifestos have been released or launched, they have gone through all the manifestos and they've come sort of past their own verdict on which they think better serves their needs and reflects that policy that they have put together. So the Association of Private Schools are saying that after studying all the manifestos, they think that the NDC's manifesto provides the best blueprint for growing private education, I mean, private sector education in Ghana. Mm. They just don't end there. They provide specifics and why they have come to that conclusion. And this is important because it follows from what we were discussing yesterday as regards the free senior high school and then the promise by the NDC specifically to extend it to free, I mean, to private schools. There have been questions as to how 
feasible that's going to be and if the private schools themselves will even accept to be part of the policy considering that they charge higher rates relative to the public schools now it appears that private schools are ready and they are going to welcome this particular um, policy proposal by the ndc so that's why you find that as part of the statement that they issued today they said they are impressed that the ndc has promised to extend free senior high school to private schools that the commitment to extend free senior high school um, to cover students in private senior high schools is a significant step towards providing equal opportunities for all students regardless of the type of schools they attend mm. so for the the association of uh, private schools this for them is one of the things that impressed them so much for them to have given an endorsement to the ndc policy on the free senior high school and by extension extending it to private schools they just don't end there they also point out to other things right so they talk about capitation grant review as contained in the ndc manifesto they say that the manifesto's pledge to review the capitation grants to address challenges in low-cost private, private schools in rural and inner city communities and to extend the grants to private schools in deprived areas will provide much needed support to schools striving to make quality education accessible for this too they say they stand with the ndc and that it better serves their need they talk about bright beginnings initiative as contained in the ndc manifesto and also stakeholder consultation they say it is key because they think that they are uh, an integral part of the whole education setup for which reason they need that kind of consultation or they need to be consulted intermittently so mm -hmm. that they can better serve their purpose so the generality of that of it is that they put together their manifesto pitched it to the political parties they've gone back to look at what is contained in the political parties manifestos and, and they think so that the NDC manifesto on private education is what will better serve their interests. I see, so they didn't find anything complementary in the MPP manifesto as far as their review is concerned in this well, statement? Well, as far as this statement is concerned, it has to do with just the NDC manifesto and how it better reflects. I mean, this is com comparative. Yeah. So after having done the comparison, they've settled on one. And I think if you ask my view, mm -hmm. I think this is, this is a step in the right direction. Because before the parties put together their manifestos that engage various groups, Guta, TUC, and all those True. people who put ideas before them, That's it's right. only appropriate that they go back and see if those ideas have been reflected. But of course, some of them cannot openly or be bold enough to do what the private schools association are doing. But of course, it's only appropriate that once you pitch ideas to political parties and you see them reflecting their manifesto, you should be able to point that out. And, so and for tonight, the verdict is with the Ghana Association of Private School Teachers. They have made their verdict. It's, 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 it's not, um, not all the people, but some yeah. of the people. As you see it. Yeah. Indeed. And that's manifesto check then um, with Dennis Pabergo Adam. You, you look good, by the way. Thank you, Alfred. You are preparing for the big day. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but um, we'll, we'll leave that. But on, on behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for... Stay with us here on Ghana tonight. Make a date with us same time tomorrow. We have another conversation as well. My name is Alfred Akonsi.